Hi everyone, it's Anne here from Anne Makes. Welcome to my channel and also welcome to my studio. Today I have a little craft project to share with you that doesn't take a lot of time. I think it's pretty simple and I hope you find it simple too. So if you're interested in seeing this, um, stay tuned. The information is about to come. So you may remember the other day I received some uh, new paints from uh, Plaid and their home decor line. These uh, wonderful chalk paints and some stencils. And uh, I thought about what I wanted to do with that and I thought the best way to try this would be on a small size project. And I have the this canvas bag and it's just like it's just really plain. And so it's perfect. It's canvas, it's a tote bag and um, I have these great colors to play with so let's try something. So as you can see I took what was my like craft sheet, the sheet that I use to protect my table, and I inserted it into the bag just to uh, protect the bag and to make it easier to do the stenciling on the outer outer side of the bag because you know it's got two sides, right, a front and a back. So that's that's why that blue thing is inside that canvas bag. Now I'm showing you the two uh, paints that I will be working with. It is a home decor chalk paint in Sunset Rose and Seriously Gray. Now these are really uh, thick paints and I will be using a traditional stencil brush to apply them with the sten through the stencil. And the stencil I will be using is the Layer Flower 34945, uh, again from Plaid Folk Art Home Decor. These Laser cut layering stencils come in a set of three. There's usually a um, pattern stencil, uh, a silhouette, and I'm holding the silhouette in my hand. And in my other hand, I just took the mask one and the mask. So it enables you to do some really um, nice layering. So actually, um, before I put the stencil down, I want to tell you that I had pre-measured to find the very center of the tote bag so I could center the uh, stencil design. So right now, I'm just showing you with a ruler. I'm just measuring the stencil to make sure I get the very center of the stencil, and then I'll be able to line that up with this very small pencil mark that I know <laughs> is on the canvas bag. You may not be able to see it, but I know it's there, and I well, this will give me... Uh, a good guide to line up the stencil so it could be nicely centered. And now I'm just double checking quickly um, the measurements on all sides to make sure it's it's right smack dab in the middle. Uh, now to make sure that the stencil doesn't move around too much as I'm, I'm working with it, I'm just going to hold it down with some painter's tape and even it's a smaller size stencil and the surface I'm working on is very flat so the tape uh, should be enough to hold it in place. So I'm just taping down the corners and I uh, will tape down the sides as well because I want to make sure that the paint doesn't seep under the stencil when I, I pounce on it with the stencil brush. As this is a, a tote bag that's made of raw canvas, pure canvas. Uh, I didn't see the need to do anything to it prior to adding the paint. I figured it's canvas. I've got paint. I mean canvas and paint go very well together. So no, I didn't prime it. I didn't prep it or anything like that. And it's a tote bag. So um, I'm expecting that this tote bag will get used and I'll get, I'll wash it and it will, um, it'll last as long as it needs to basically. So, but uh, I am sure that this paint will, will stick very well and will also uh, wash well. So uh, for my palette, I'm actually using a really thin and small, uh, it's supposed to be a cutting board. I got this at the dollar store a few years ago and I picked it up to try it to use in my kitchen. And frankly, I just wasn't very impressed with it. I just thought it's way too small to actually, you know, to cut up a lot of 
food and stuff. So I just set it aside and recently I, I saw them again and I was oh, these will make great paint palettes. So there's a tip for you. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm, I'm using this little supposedly vegetable chopping board for is uh, a paint palette. And uh, I shook this paint up because it's, it's brand new. It was shipped to me. I just wanted to make sure that uh, it was well mixed inside. And I'm just going to pour or scoop some out uh, and pour it onto this palette of mine. I'm using uh, a palette knife to stir it a bit more. And then I'll just... Uh, Pour some onto my palette here. I don't need a lot of paint because this is not that big of a stencil, uh, but I do want to be pretty generous with it because I want to be able to get all of those little crevices in the canvas filled with paint. I'm trying not to have too many, too many bare spots. Although I'm I don't really mind a distressed look, but I want to try to fill up as many of the, the nooks and crannies as possible in the canvas. So I'm just prepping my brush here and dabbing off extra on some scrap paper that I have on the side to make sure that my brush is working well. Um, by the way, this is a brush that I've had for over 25 years and I didn't realize it until after the video uh, I was done with the, the whole project and I was washing my brushes. It's a plaid brush, but I've had it for over 25 years, so I'm pretty sure that um, this model <laughs> is not available anymore, but plaid does um, make a lot of stencil brushes, a lot of brushes in general, as well as paint products in case you're interested. And just to show you, if you take care of your tools, they can last you a really long time. <laughs> So here I am pouncing the paint. That's what the, what I'm doing there, going up and down with the brush. I'm making sure to not rub. So it, around when I get to the edges, I notice there, I'm putting more pressure on the edges just to make sure that no paint seeps under the stencil. Now, like I said, I've had this brush for years, and I know it's a good brush, and it doesn't create a lot of seepage, so that's why I, I go back to using this tool over and over again. So as you can see, I'm just dabbing on the paint, and uh, now I decide that in the center I could be a little bit more forceful because I really need to put more paint. As the canvas uh, does draw in quite a bit of the paint. I'm just going to continue adding uh, the uh, Seriously Gray 34179 chalk paint and then I will have to uh, let that dry basically. And here's another tip for you. Uh, because I want to be able to reuse this stencil and my tools, I already have some really warm water ready in uh, the sink in my studio with some dishwashing detergent. And I will just throw that stencil into that hot water so I can clean it. Um, I'm not looking to make it super clean, but I just want to be able to use that stencil as much as possible and if I clean it regularly then there will be less layers of paint stuck to it uh, because when the stencil these kinds of stencils when they get encrusted with lots of layers of paint they could get more difficult to work with depending on how much you're going to work with them of course so I just like to uh, have some hot water ready in either a sink or a basin and uh, just throw my stencils in there afterwards. I will also be cleaning my stencil brush with some hot soapy water as well to make sure the bristles don't just get stuck together. And now I'm just fast forwarding this part because it's kind of boring to see me just paint a gray spot. 
Um, I'm done painting. I'm just going to remove all the pieces of tape and I'm just putting the tape to the side because I know I'm going to need tape again to do the second part of the stenciling or the layering. So that's it, just uh, peeling off the tape and I'll remove the stencil, drop it into the warm water and let it dry. And there we have the first layer and the dirty stencil. And now we just let it dry. Once the layer of uh, seriously gray chalk paint, um, and by the way, it's a matte chalk paint, is dry, I'm able to position the pattern layer of this uh, three-piece stencil back down over the first layer which is considered the, the silhouette part of it and I'm just using the same tape that I used uh, the first time to position and, and keep the stencil steady on the canvas. And I'm back with my trusty uh, kitchen board palette and some matte Sunset Rose uh, chalk paint from Plaid from the Folk Art Home Decor line. The number is 34175. And now I'm just repeating what I did with the first color, the Seriously Gray. And I'm applying the paint with the stencil brush through the stencil, making sure that my bristles don't seep under the actual stencil so I can get a nice crisp design. And I'm being very generous with the uh, Sunset Rose paint because I really want to cover up those gray parts and all I want left afterwards is the pattern design left in the uh, dark gray. So I'm finished with the layer of Sunset Rose and now time for the big reveal. Uh, I am very pleased with how the design has turned out. Now the gray creates the delicate lines uh, around the rose and uh, I really like the color. Once it dries, it dries a little darker and I'm, I'm pleased with uh, the result. So uh, just stay tuned to see the finished product and I hope that you found this video informative, please go check out all the products by Plaid. They are a wonderful company. They've been around for a very long time. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. I would appreciate a thumbs up. Please like, comment, and share this video. And until next time, uh, stay crafty. Bye. I hope that you enjoyed this short tutorial. And if you did, I would so appreciate a like or thumbs up. Please comment, let me know what you think, and share this video. Uh, also, if you're not subscribed, why not? Come on, it's a lot of fun to join this group. You won't miss out on well when I make a new video. So thanks again for watching. Take care of yourself, stay crafty, bye.